Hey, thank you, Chen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to Youth Service at Brighton Youth. Uh, we have finally, finally come to the final instalment of our Sex Explained series. Maybe by this time, some of you already feel overdosed on the topic of sex. Or maybe you have enough of me like, talking to you about uncomfortable things. Okay, the good news is that you will take a break from me from the next four weeks. Okay, because like, like what John has announced, some of our adult leaders, Joshua and Yitong, will be speaking for the very first time. Okay, and after that, I've also invited a guest speaker from outside to come and uh, sp speak to us. So I'm sure that all of us will benefit greatly for in the next few weeks. So invite a friend okay, to join you for your service. Come, help me tell a partner, invite a friend. Come, let's pray. Ask the Lord to speak to us this, morning, this afternoon. Father, we just want to give thanks to you for bringing us here. Lord, we know that even though um, the COVID situation has taken yet another, um, uh, hit another roadblock, we, we are going to a stabilization period for another month. But Lord, I give thanks to you that God, you have kept all of us safe. You have given us the opportunity to continue to meet together, to worship you as your family, oh God. So God, I just want to pray, Lord, you'll just continue to preserve us, continue to protect us. And I pray this afternoon, even as we look into your word, even as we understand, oh God, uh, more about your purpose for sex for us, that God, you just come and help us to change our mind, oh God. You come and help us to understand your word better, to understand that God, your plans for us is to bless us, not to harm us, to prosper us and not to diminish our joy. And I pray that God, you also come and change our hearts so that Lord, that we, our lives will be changed accordingly, oh God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome back. A few years ago, during one of my messengers uh, during youth service, I cracked a joke about homosexuality. I said, homosexuality is not part of God's plan because God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. After the service, a youth cell group leader came to talk to me. And she said, Pastor, your joke was inappropriate and insensitive. And it's, it's, it's not nice towards the gay people. At that instant, right, in the split second, right, it's like two things flash into my mind. On one hand, I thought the girl was being overreactive. Like they were, she was overreacting. In my mind, I was just thinking, come on, it is just something light-hearted light to help us to remember that God created men and women to come together. Why so serious? At the same time, there was another thought. I recognize that she truly felt a lot for the gay people and my comment upset her. So when she said that to me, so many things was going through my mind, I was processing this, right? And within one second, right at that moment, I replied to her, yes, you are right, I was insensitive. To, it was insensitive for me to crack that joke. So ever since then, I stopped saying that joke, Adam and Steve, and I stopped using the word gay jokingly. You know, last time when you play games, when something is over in bar, right, OP, then you say, oh, this, this hero is so gay, right? I start, I, start saying, I start using the word entirely, right, unless I, I use it to refer to homosexual people. That conversation with the youth cell leader made me realize that the issue of homosexuality is not just something that is championed by the non-Christians. There are Christians, even some of, uh, some of them in our midst, who care deeply for gay people. At the same time, I realized that even among Christians, there are differing views on this issue. I once saw a cell group, one of the cell group here, taught, having a very rigorous discussion about LGBT over, WhatsApp, over their WhatsApp chat. Some of them, they were sharing that they were trying to share their Christian faith with their friends, and in a, inevitably, the, 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 the topic of homosexuality came out. And their friend told our guys, our youths, that they cannot accept a religion that deem gay people as bad. And the, once the conversation among the cell group members led, them, led, led to them asking bigger questions, right? They were asking in the cell group, group chat, why is Christianity against LGBT? Why don't we support them? Will LGBT people go to heaven? And one of the girls, you know, one of the girls in our midst, she asked, she said that she was really confused about this whole situation, or this whole issue. Because she heard a Christian outside saying, 
God loves me for who I am, and I am part of the LGBT community, thus God will accept me. Christians, by the show of hands, how many of you have tried engaging your friends on the topic of homosexuality? God, try to talk, lah, try. Don't need to have very conclusive, but have at least try to talk. Anybody? So few of you don't have, or you're just keep quiet. <laughs> okay, there are a few of you, right? Okay, if you have done so, if you have tried to talk to your friends about, ho- about the, uh, the topic of homosexuality, you will realize that you face a tension, right? There's two forces at, at, at play. On one hand, Christianity tells us that there is a God who loves us more than we can ever imagine. And while we were still rebelling against Him, He, lo- he, he loves us. On the other hand, right, we struggle. We don't even know how to explain our Christian position on this issue. Right? Deep down, we know, hey, hmm, there is something wrong, but you know, I just can't quite put my finger to it. Right? We, we don't know how to explain our position. And my goal today is very simple. I just want to get both Christians in our midst and the non-Christian friends who are joining us today to understand the biblical pers- pers- perspective on the issue of homosexuality. Okay, contrary to what the general population in society, society thinks, the Bible does not promote discrimination of any kind. Okay, so today I want to get all the Christian, I want to get all the Christians in our midst, okay, all of us who are Christians in our midst, to do three things when it comes to the issue of homosexuality. And to our friends who are non-Christians who are here because you are interested about this topic. I hope even as you hear about these three things that we want to do together as a Christian community, that you too will gain a clearer understanding of our position on this issue. So are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay, number one is this. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to, when it comes to the topic of homosexuality, we need to look to the creator, not culture. Let's start with the question. How do you know what is right and wrong when it comes to homosexuality? How do you know? What is right or wrong? Is it there? Yes. When it comes to the topic of homosexuality. If you support homosexuality, how do you know you are right? And if you are against it, how do you know you are right? How do you know that it's wrong? Okay, come. Do you think our culture can answer this question on homosexuality? Yes, somebody say no, right? Uh, Straight away. Okay, let's have an illustration to understand this. Okay, come, let's we do this together, okay? By a show of hands, how many of you use an Apple phone? They ask you use Apple and always send share share about homosexuality, don't raise hand. Okay, how many of you use Android phone? Oh, so many Android phone users. Apple phone users, Apple phone users, Apple phone users first, uh, would you say that Apple is superior to Android? Okay. Android phone users, would you say that Apple is lousy? Well, I see you. Let's say, let's say, let's say. I use an iPhone, uh, mine is iPhone 8, 4 years old already. Let's say I, an Apple user, come to one of you Android. Who's Android just now? I'll come to one of you Android users, right? I'll come to one of you Android users. Or you got a gen, the, the, the flip, the, uh, what's it called? Four, four phone. Uh. The thing can be four. Right? Let's say I come to you, right? I, Apple user, I come to one of you Android user, and I say, Apple, yeah! Android, boo! Android user, how will you respond? How will you respond? I think you'll respond in one of two ways, lah. Okay, two ways. Okay, Apple and if you just make the mental switch in your in, in your head or yourself, okay? Android user come to Apple user and boo you, okay? I think you'll respond in one of two ways. The first way you will say is no ho, Apple expensive and lousy, Android better. Right? You will argue back. The second way you will respond is, oh, okay, whatever. Will you, if the person come to you and say, Apple, yeah, Android, boo, Android user, will you then change your mind? Say, yeah, 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 you are right, Apple, yeah. Will you change your mind? Maybe. Maybe la. I think some of us, we won't. La, right? A lot of us say we won't. La. Okay, so you, you likely, right, you will not change your mind about your choice. 
Suppose I'm not happy, I, the Apple user, I'm not happy with your response, huh? right? That you're not convinced. So I gather one big crowd of Apple users, right? All this gang, and I come to you and I tell you, see, all these people use Apple, only use Android. Will you then say, wow, Apple, yeah, Android, boo. Will you change your mind? Most likely you won't, right? Okay. Most likely you won't because we understand that the more people support or the louder they talk, it does not necessarily mean they are right. Can you understand that? Right? It doesn't mean that more people have more people do something, the more the louder people talk, it does not necessarily say means that they are right. And this is exactly what we are seeing in our Culture, more and more celebrities are stepping up to speak out in support of LGBT, right? If you follow people on, on Twitter or Instagram, famous people like Taylor Swift, Benedict Cumberbatch, Chris Evans, Barack Obama have given their support for the LGBT community. Okay, and because these celebrities dominate the internet, they dominate our social media, that we are given the impression that homosexuality is acceptable because so many people are talking about it. Okay, now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not trying to say that these people got it all wrong. My point is this. We cannot automatically and logically conclude that homosexuality is right or wrong based on what most people are saying. Are you guys with me? May I suggest to you a new perspective on looking at this issue? The biggest question that we need to ask is not, is homosexuality right or wrong? This is not the biggest question we need to ask. The biggest question that we need to ask is, is God real? How many times, partner, is God real? How does this make sense? If you believe that there is no God, right? If you believe that everything happened by chance, life evolved randomly, then there will be no such thing as right or wrong. You may feel very strongly about gays being discriminated, but, oh, okay, <laughs> did I say something wrong? You may feel very strongly about gays being discriminated, but if, there's n if there is no right or wrong, oh, Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Hmm. Okay. I think the, the sound men don't like what I'm talking about. It's okay, we'll explore more. <laughs> okay, guys, come, focus, focus. Okay, if there is no God, there will be no such thing as right or wrong. Right? You may feel that, hey, it is not right for people to discriminate gays. But if there's no such thing as right or wrong, you have no basis to insist that people should stop discriminating gays. Okay, on the other hand, if you believe that everything that we see in this universe was brought into existence by a creator, then it must follow logically, whoa. then it must follow logically that he has designed his creation. <laughs> In a certain way. Okay, let's. Okay, come. Maybe I'll stand here. Lah. Okay, come. While wow, he sorted out. Okay, on the other hand, if you believe that everything was brought into existence by a creator, okay, there was somebody up there who created the whole world, then it must follow logically that he has designed his creation in a certain way. And this person who created the universe, he has the right, he has the power to decide how things ought to be run. He makes the rules and that settles it. Okay, now I know some of you here, you guys might be unsettled, you might be undecided whether or not God is real. Uh, re recently, I, I, I joined one of the cell group, and to my surprise, right, some of the, some, some of the youths who have been coming to church quite a few, for quite a few years, 
I've been in youth for quite a few years. They told me, Pastor, actually, uh, I, don't really, I don't even know whether God is real or not. So I was like, hmm, okay, that is interesting. Right? And we, we read a book together and for six weeks right, to explore the question whether God is real. Right? But some of you might be undecided whether God is real. Okay, but let's just assume there is a creator, right? that God is real. And let's consider the Christian position on homosexuality. Okay, Jesus said this in Matthew 19. Matthew 19? Yes. Verse 4, haven't you read? He replied that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Where is this, take, where is this taken from? Which book? Genesis, right? So Jesus was quoting from Genesis. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So over here, Jesus is telling us a few things. Right? Firstly, he tells us that by God's design, right, the Creator, marriage is intended to be a permanent union between two persons. Right? In other words, divorce is not part of God's plan. Right? Divorce is not part of God's plan. At the same time, right, Jesus also tells us that God designed for this permanent union to be shared by a male and a female. Yes, these days we see gay people getting married. Okay, but over here, Jesus makes it clear that according to God's design, the Creator's design, only a man-woman combination can constitute a valid marriage. My point is this. Okay, to decide whether gay sex is right or wrong, we cannot rely on our own feelings. Neither can we rely on what culture or celebrity says. Remember, the more people say it doesn't mean it's right, by, by logic. We need to ask the question, is God real? Okay, if you believe that there is no creator, the world just exists, right? Everything is happened by chance. Then there's no such thing as right or wrong, right? Everybody can do whatever they want. But if you start from the position that there is a creator and he's in charge, then he makes the rules, he calls the shots. And if that creator is the Christian God, right? what Jesus said, he has made it clear that any sex outside of marriage or outside of the male-female combination, it is wrongful. I guess still with me after he settled this? I guess still with me? Okay, that's the most difficult uh, idea to understand. Right? We need to look to the creator, not culture. The second thing we need to do okay, is to reject the homosexual practices, not tendency. Okay, to reject the homosexual practices, not tendency. Okay, these days, we really need to be careful about anything we post online. Right, you agree? Right, you need to be really careful about anything we post online because it is so easy to be misunderstood. Okay, this is more so for Christians talking about homosexuality. I assure you, if you post anything that is not in support of LGBT, it will most likely be interpreted, interpreted negatively. Okay, people will think that you are hateful, you are arrogant, you are judgmental. This is why it is important for us to be clear about what exactly is Christianity against. Okay, we need to be clear of what exactly are we against. Okay, to put it simply, okay, to put it simply, Christianity is against homosexual practices not against individuals with homosexual tendency. Okay, we try, let's, try, let, let's try to understand this better. Okay, we start with tendency first. Okay, what's the meaning of tendency? Okay, homosexual tendency refers to people who experience same-sex attraction, lah, right? Guys liking a guy or a girl liking a girl. Okay, a guy sees a hot guy and it, it becomes attracted to him in the same way that a heterosexual guy will be attracted to a hot girl, right? Same-sex attraction. Okay, you might ask, why? But why? Why do certain people experience same-sex attraction? Why are they so different from the vast majority of people? 
Okay, that's a good question. Scientists have attempted to find a scientific explanation to this. For example, they try to locate uh, what we call a gay gene, right? They have attempted to try to locate in a DNA makeup whether there is such whether there is any genes that cause somebody to be homosexual. The last I checked is un there is, is uh, inconclusive, meaning they have not found something. Some psychologists they try to explain that individuals become homosexual because of what happened to them during their childhood. Okay, it sounds logical, but that does not quite explain why some people who had a wholesome childhood still experience same-sex attraction. Okay, so, where, so whether homo, homosexual tendency, same-sex attraction is caused by nature or nurture, right? whether it's caused by nature or nurture, nobody knows exactly. At least nobody has come out to show proof like, that they know exactly what's happening. Okay, but one thing we know for sure, that same-sex attraction is a real thing. It is not an over-imagination. Now, does that mean that Christianity discriminate and reject people who experience same-sex attraction? What do you think? Yes or no? Does Christianity reject, turn away, condemn, score people who experience same-sex attraction? Yes or no? Exactly. It's the answer is a resounding no. How many times, our partner? We don't reject gays. Okay, Christianity is not against homosexual individuals. Okay, people who like guys who like guys, girls who like girls, we're not against them. But we, Christianity is against homosexual practices. Okay, it's easy to understand practices, relationship, sexual intercourse, marriage between two persons of the same gender. Okay, and, it's, and it's important for us to understand that the Bible considers homosexual conduct, homosexual practices to be sinful because it goes against the design of God. Okay, love and, God designed love and romance to be between a man and a woman. Homosexual practices are sinful not because God commands Christians to hate on the gays, but because these actions are not part of God's plan. Right, just like how we talk about how pornography and premarital sex are not part of God's design as well. Okay, come, Romans chapter 1 has this to say about homosexual practices. Okay, chapter 1 verse 26. Because of this, God gave them over the shameful lusts. Even their women exchange sexual, natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandon natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Okay, underline the words uh, natural okay, and also the, un the unnatural. Okay, this is a key word. Okay, it, ha it, it, happens three, it appears three times here, including the word unnatural. Questions. Who determines what is considered natural? Who determines what is considered natural? Okay, it's not a trick question. It's easy, right? Easy to understand. The person who created nature, right? It must be the person who created nature that will, that will determine what is considered natural and unnatural. Homosexual practices are sinful because they go against the natural order of God's design. Just like how pornography and premarital sex have no place in God's grand scheme. Can you understand that? As we conclude this series. Now, there are some of you here, here right here in this room, okay, who experience same-sex attraction. Some of you I know personally, and... There are some of you, right, who have been hiding it. Okay, you have not shared it with anybody. I'm sure that those of you who have not chosen to share with anybody, of those of you that I know, okay, you're feeling scared, you're anxious, and you're feeling lonely. Okay, you're trying hard to hide it because you're afraid of people, especially leaders condemning you. So let me say this up front. <laughs> Okay, to all of you, who are, who, for those of you out there who might be who having this attra same-sex attraction. 
you liking people of the same sex does not change my perspective of you one single bit. You are still a cherished and beloved member of our community. If I were to find out that you are in a homosexual relationship or you are having sex with somebody of the same gender, I will talk to you. I will counsel you. I will help you. I will hear you out. I will pray with you. In the same way that I would do for anybody struggling with pornography or engaging in casual sex. Casual heterosexual sex. Do you understand that? Right? I will do for you the the same thing that I will do for anybody who is struggling with other sexual sins. And I want to do this because I believe that the Bible does not want to give us fullness of joy. He wants to give us peace and we can only have that if we embrace God's original design for our lives. So, Christianity is not just against homosexual practices but against anything that goes against God's purpose for sex. Okay, last point. The third thing that we need to do, okay, now that we understand this, okay, as, so now that we have all this information, what then should be our response? The third thing we need to do, we need to speak the truth with love, not pride. In the last few years, in recent times, the reputation of Christians all over the world has become worse amidst the homosexual argument, mainly due to the hate comments given by some Christian pastors. Okay, here's one. Homophobic pastor says LGBT plus people should be killed as much as God's love, God hates. I was just reading about this article. This pastor in USA, not Singapore, like in USA, says that gay people should be rounded up and the laws of the land should be amended to put these gays to death, execute them. And he was teaching this and he was just preaching this in a youth service like this and the congregation all went, Amen. <laughs> I check out their website and it says, this is what, the, this is what their website says, it's no longer there but uh, I got it uh, back then. And he says, God said, okay, I quote, uh, God said homosexuality should be punished with the death penalty as set forth in the Old Testament. No homosexual will be allowed to attend or join in service. This is what they wrote on their website. <laughs> and after the, after the pastor gave this interview, many people spoke out against him. And the pastor defended himself. He says, and this is what he told the reporters. I preach what the Bible says. And what the Bible says is not popular. That was his response. I agree with him as a preacher that what the Bible says is not popular, but I'm just not so sure which Bible he has been reading. Do you know why some Christians are so prideful when it comes to the issue of homosexuality? Do you know why? Do you know why that all this time that the, the impression that we have been giving to the world is that of arrogance and pride? Our problem right, is that we think that we, the heterosexuals, are better than the homosexuals. That's our problem. We think that we are normal and they are not. We think that we are more righteous than those people. We think to ourselves, they, those people need healing and God needs to restore them. And we, hey, we are, we, are, we are very, very normal. That's what's essentially going through our mind. Okay, but hear what the Bible says about us. The heterosexuals are this, the rest of us. Hear what the Bible says about us. Previous slide, yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 
Okay, over here, Paul, the writer, he wrote right, that no sinner will inherit the kingdom of God. Basically, that's another way of saying all sinners will end up in hell. Let me ask you some questions. Do you think you're greedy? Do you think you're greedy? Some of you are nodding your head. Like, yeah. Do you, are there things or people in your life you love more than God himself? Have? Have, right? Some of you are nodding your head. If there are people or things that you love more than God yourself, you are idol- idolater over there. You are idolater. You worship idols. Have you been indulging in pornography? If you are, you are an adulterer. Okay, because Jesus says, whoever looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Yes, men who have sex with men, over there, men who have sex with men, yes, they will not enter heaven. And so will be the case for the greedy, for the people who worship idols, and for people who commit adultery in their heart. Gay people don't go to hell. Sinners go to hell. Our problem as Christians is that we tend to demonize people involved in sexual sins, especially homosexual sins. But we forgot that all of us, all of us, can find ourselves on this list. All of us. We can find ourselves on this list. No matter how you argue or try to, lo- and try to rationalize things away, all of us can find ourselves on this list. The heterosexual people are equally deserving of hell. And nobody can be good enough to inherit the kingdom of God. So how? Got any hope or not? Got hope for us or not? Okay, yes. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6 immediately follows up with verse 11. And that is what some of you were. And those, that's a powerful sentence, underline it. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Okay, even though all of us, whether you're homosexual or heterosexual, all of us, we are deserving of hell. Even though we are deserving of hell, God did something for us. Okay, over, over here, there's three verbs over here, right? There's wash, there's sanctified, there's justified. Okay, the word justified is a legal term, right? law, legal term. It means for the judge to say that you are not guilty, to pronounce you not guilty. Innocent, you can go now. Okay, and in love, God extends forgiveness to all sinners by justifying them. Okay, he justifies sinners by taking the punishment of sin on himself. Okay, we ought to be punished, but Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he came and took our punishment. Jesus shed his blood, he died on the cross to offer himself as a sacrifice, so that by taking our punishment, God now says that we are no longer guilty of all those sins. Is this a God who wants to send people to hell? Do you think he, read, he just gleefully and indifferently wants to condemn people to hell? No. He takes holiness so seriously that he punishes sin severely. The only appropriate level of punishment for our sin is the cross but He loves us so immensely that He willingly came to take the punishment in our place. When we remember that we are sinners in desperate need of God's grace, it will transform the way we relate to homosexual people. Okay, we will not be prideful. For those of you, those of you who, are, who like to make gay jokes, we will, we will stop doing that. We will not be prideful. Because we know that we are no better off. Right? We are no better off. We are all sinners in desperate need of God's grace. Instead, we will treat them with love and humility. 
when we talk to our friends about homosexuality, we will not just stop at saying, oh, it is wrong because the Bible says so. We will not stop there. We will go on to say that all sins deserve hell. But God, through Christ, provided a way for us to be forgiven, accepted, and inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I too am an undeserved sinner in need of God's grace. Do you think that's a good response in a conversation of homosexuality? Do you think that's a good response to your friends? And I think if more of us understand the Christian position of homosexuality and talk about it openly with our friends, we will be able to change, the, change society. We will be able to change people's perception towards the church. And guys, we will have more homosexual people willing to come to church. Okay, I'm sure, right, when I talk to you guys, when I join a cell group, you guys have homosexual friends, right? But if all of us really can understand it, our position and be willing to talk about it, to speak the truth in love, we will be able to see many more homosexual friends joining our church and consider, willing to consider the Christian faith. Amen? Okay, so let's all speak the truth with love, not pride. Huh? Come here and tell our partner, speak the truth with love. Can I just invite the worship team to join me as I conclude? Okay, as we conclude the Sex Explained series, okay, we have talked about a lot of things. And I want to ask you one final question, even as we, uh, we, we, uh, we conclude this series. Okay, what kind of Brighton youth do you want to build? What kind of Brighton youth do you want to build? What do you hope to see in this place? There are many things that I want to see happening. And one of the most important things that I want is for Brighton youth to be a safe place. Have we tell our partner, a safe place. I want to see all of us loving and embracing people who are different from us. Okay, and that includes the gay people. I want members, all of us, to feel that there is no need to hide their situation, to hide their struggles, whether it is pornography addiction, whether it is having casual sex outside habitually because you're giving in to temptation, or you are experiencing same-sex attraction. I want members to be able to share their struggles honestly without fear of judgment and condemnation. I want this to be a safe place. Do you want this to be a safe place? Right? We want that, right? We want a place whereby we can be free to share what is really in our heart. We're surrounded by people who will not judge us and condemn us. Okay, at the same time, I also want to see members, all of us, encouraging each other to grow in our relationship with God. A lot of times when we, when we think about become, growing God, oh, a lot of times when we think about growing God, we think about doing devotion, right? We know Him intellectually by reading. But a big part of growing God is to become more and more like Jesus Christ. How many times, partner, more and more like Christ? A big part of our Christian life is to become more and more like Christ. And God has placed us in this church so that we will challenge one another to give up our sinful habits because we want to grow in holiness. You see, it's one thing to accept, right? Let's say you have struggling pornography. It's one thing to say, I don't condemn you. But it's another thing to say that I, I want you to get rid of it because it is good for you. Right? It's one thing to say that I don't, I don't reject you because of your home or because of your sexual habits. But it's another thing to say that I want you to stop that because it is good for you, because it pleases the heart of God, because we want to grow in holiness. Okay, and I want Brighton Youth, and I hope to see Brighton Youth to be a place whereby all of us will come before God with clean hands and pure hearts, because we want to honor Him. And that's my big, and that's my biggest desire. Okay, as a leader of this, uh, uh, as your leader, to see that this place is really not just for us to come to do or set up programs, not just for us to go through the motion, 
But it's a place that we can do life. That we can be very real with one another. Where we can bear our hearts to one another. And together we will grow, we will grow in God. Okay, do you want Brighton U to be a safe place eh, for us to grow in God? Yes? Do you want Brighton U to be a safe place? Okay, then I invite you, I invite all of you, okay, to join me okay, in building a safe place here in Brighton Youth. My wife was, um, last week my wife was here sharing her story and she was hesitant, right, to share her story. Firstly, because she has never shared this with anybody, right, so, and she was very worried how people would think of her. And on the other hand, she told me that, wow, I'm a pastor's wife, eh? wife, they hear my story and say, wow, how come pastor we get like that one? I said, why you choose this kind of wife? <laughs> and I told her, hey, it's, not, it's really not about us, right? It's really, right, I mean, what's, whatever that's in the past, right, the Bible says that, that therefore, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Right? We are a new creation. Right? I told my wife, we are a new creation. What's more important is what God, what God has done for us and what He's about to do in our life. But I told her that your story will encourage other people we we'll give hope to people who think there's, there's no hope. So my wife and I, we have taken the first step in this series <laughs> to be real with you, to be honest. Because I want this place, I want to see Brighton to be a safe place. And I want to invite you to join me okay, in building a safe place here in Brighton Youth. Okay, to embrace people, to accept people, and open yourself up at the same time. Okay, to remember that everything that we want to do here we do it for God. Okay, the one who loves us so much. Okay, and the one who has forgiven us, accepted us, and given us the opportunity to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Come, shall we stand on our feet? Let's pray. And just come, shall we just all over this place? Shall we just begin to close our eyes? Let's begin to pray. Just begin, why don't you just begin to pray for yourself right now? Just begin to pray and begin to thank God for this awesome, um, this awesome privilege, this amazing privilege to be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Just begin to tell God that, God, I thank you. Even though there is nothing in me that is deserving of your love, nothing in me is, that is even worth mentioning, that God, you have chosen me. You have selected me. You have accepted me. You have forgiven me through Christ. And you have given me the opportunity to inherit the kingdom of heaven. I'm just going to tell God, God, I'm so thankful. Thank you for this opportunity to know you. Thank you for this opportunity to have a relationship with you. And I pray that all the days of my life, I want to pursue you. I want to pursue holiness. I want to come before you with clean hands and pure hearts. And I will do it because I want to love you. I want to honour you. I want to please you, the one who has set me free. Father, I just want to pray for each and every one of us in this place, God. I give thanks to you for the work that you have been doing in their hearts all these weeks. Even as they bear their hearts with one another, even as they talk about the brokenness in their lives. I give thanks to you that God, you have begun your work of restoration, oh God, in some of the, our lives, oh God. I pray that Lord, you will just continue to mend the broken pieces in our lives, oh God. And I pray you will use our story to give hope to those out there who have no hope, oh God. And I pray that, Lord, for each and every one of us, that, Lord, we will be committed. We will want to pursue a life of holiness because it pleases you. We will want to be, become more and more like Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who will come and set us free. And I pray as a ministry that brighter you will be a safe place. It will be a place whereby people can be so real. People will be so comfortable. People will, will let down their defenses. People will not manipulate each other. People will not make will not make use of each other's secrets. But this will be a place whereby we genuinely care and embrace one another, oh God. And I pray that together as a community, the Lord, you help us to pursue you, to pursue holiness, pursue purity, 
And I pray that this will be a place where, my Lord, we'll be able, able to attract so many friends of God. Even people who might be homosexuals, people who might be afraid, that this will be a place where we will give hope to people. We will share about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, oh God. So Lord, I just want to give thanks to you. Thank you for this series. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. We pray that, it, that you, from here on, you just continue to use our life, use our story, oh God, to shine your light wherever we go. Lord. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.